Praise the Lord. Give an hallelujah that shows you awake. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And the Lord make his word to prosper in your life, in your hand, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for all your children, sons and daughters, all our leaders, all the workers, and all the people who are committed to serving you. We're asking, O oh Lord, our service, mine, theirs, will not be in vain in Jesus' name. I pray that our service will be a rewardable service. Blessing people here on earth and then blessing our lives here in the ministry. And then when we pass on to eternity, we'll be happy, we'll serve you with all our heart, with all our soul, without looking back anytime in Jesus' name. Bless everyone tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you, you can see that. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5. We're reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Those are the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He started the Sermon on the Mount by declaring those will be blessed. And it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who know they have nothing to pay for their own salvation. And it come to the Lord, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. And as they turn from their own works, the works of their hand, which cannot buy, which cannot purchase salvation, they turn to the Lord, they become saved children of the kingdom and then he says blessed are those that mourn the people that mourn not just for themselves they see the corruption of the world they see the deadliness of the lives of the people in the world and as we mourn for the dead they mourn for those who are dead in trespasses and sins they shall be comforted and then he says blessed are the people who thirst and hunger after righteousness when we become saved we become righteous the lord takes away all the sins of the past and then he brings all sin to his own righteousness and we're thirst and we're passionate and we're driven we want righteousness we don't want position without righteousness power without righteousness we do not want recognition without righteousness first and foremost in our hearts from the depth of our hearts we want righteousness and we're thirsty and we're hungry and it says for they shall be filled it tells us blessed are the meek the people who now have come to the lord there's no pride and there is no arrogance and they are meek and lowly in the sight of the lord and they have the very nature of christ for i am meek and lowly and as you follow me and you receive the nature of christ you shall have rest for your soul now he tells us he says blessed are the pure in heart the heart is purified the blood of jesus cleanses the heart washes the heart purges the heart makes the heart pure and it says they only they shall see the lord if you look at the other side of that verse every coin has two sides you have this side the head you have that side the tail you have this positive practical side blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see God but damned doomed punished will be the impure in heart for they shall not see God they might have whatever standing whatever position whatever calling 
whatever so-called consecration whatever commitment they might serve the lord like the pharisees thought they were serving the lord but the only problem with the pharisees is that their hearts were not pure and with all the zeal they manifested and with all the commitment they manifested unfortunate and cursed and damned and doomed and eternally punished at those who are impure in heart for they shall not see god we're looking at the message today the blessedness and benefits for the pure in heart what jesus confirmed and what jesus described and he said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god the blessedness and the benefits for the pure in heart there are three things we're looking at here number one the provision and the proof of purity of heart the lord has made the provision anyone everyone can come to the lord and the lord can still touch our hearts and touch our lives and make our hearts pure and when we partake of that provision there'll be there'll be the proof people will see the fruit and the evidence and the product of the work of grace in our hearts the provision and the proof of purity of heart number two the promise and the power for the pure heart the promise and the power for the pure heart there are people that think that holiness or purity of heart is just all alone by itself and they describe their purity of heart by i don't do this i don't wear this i don't talk this i don't i don't i don't but you see holiness or purity of heart is not an empty experience it's a promise the lord gives us and then when you see that we're pure in heart he gives us his power and that power will be able to fulfill what he has called us to fulfill here in ministry on earth the promise and the power for pure hearts number three the performance of prophecy for the pure in heart there's prophecy that the lord has given concerning the pure in heart and then all that prophecy or promise he fulfills he performs the performance of prophecy for the pure in heart let's come to number one number one is the provision and the proof of purity of heart matthew chapter 5 verse 8 again blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see god they shall see god they only the pure in heart shall see god there are three things we're looking at number one personal salvation with peace in the heart personal salvation with peace in the heart number two proving sanctification and purity of heart number three persevering spirit with purpose of heart let's come to number one there this is the foundation before we become pure in heart before we become sanctified there must be salvation before sanctification there must be peace in the heart before purity of heart personal salvation or peace in the heart in ephesians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 14 ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 for he is our peace the sinner does not have peace with god the wicked is like the troubled sea tossed to and fro there is no peace says the lord for the wicked the sinner does not have peace in himself the sinner does not have peace with his neighbors the sinner does not have peace in his family that's why there is family violence beating biting each other and destroying each other there is no peace in the heart 
There is no peace in relationship. There is no peace with the wife or the husband. There is no peace in the place of work. He chooses this one, calls him an enemy. And he approaches this other one, an enemy. The sinner does not have peace with his neighbors. And the sinner does not have peace with God. And then as we turn away, turn away from sin and turn away from self and turn away from pride that wants to trample upon every other person then we come to christ he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us he breaks down the middle wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile, between the man and the woman, between the husband and the wife, between the neighbor and the neighbor, there's peace now, and you can love your neighbor as yourself. Look at verse 15, it says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, he takes the enmity away. Once you come to the Lord, the hatred and the enmity he takes away, even the law of commandments contained in the inner ordinances the old testament laws that will make somebody hate another person he is a gentile i must hate him he is from canaan he is from Hittites. he is from the other side i must hate him he is from another tribe and our people this is what they want and because of that there is hatred in their hearts you know, sometimes we can say we believe the Bible, we're saved, we're sanctified, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hold on. Do you have peace with other people? When you look at what is happening in our country, for example, it's like the South wants to hate the North, the North wants to hate the South. And when we hear of some news going around, there is unrest in that village. There is unrest in that community. And some people that we don't know, they have killed one, two, three. And the one, two, three they have killed, they are from my tribe. And they will forget Christianity. If they killed people from our tribe, although we may not go out now to kill anybody, when we hear that some other people, they bind themselves together and they killed the other side inside us, we're in agreement. They should kill them. They should destroy them because they came from and they killed this side. So other people too should rise from our side and kill the other side. Where's your salvation? And where is the evidence that you have peace with God and peace with everybody in the nation? And that the law of commandments contained in ordinances, that law, you see there are tribes that have this particular law. You see anybody from that side bearing this name and doing this kind of work, anytime you see them, the law in that community is they have done so much evil to our people in their community. So when they appear in your community, give it to them, retaliate. If you can kill them, kill them, bury them, that nobody will know. You see, that does not show that we have the grace of God and we have the law of the Lord directing us. And he says it's now to make himself of twin, one new man, so making peace. We'll be peacemakers in Jesus' name. I can't hear your Amen. You will not contribute money to the people who are destroying others because they want to carry arms to destroy the other side of humanity. Can I hear a good amen? amen. 
there will be personal salvation with peace in your heart it tells us in Romans chapter 5 reading from verse 1 Romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God therefore being justified by faith we come to the Lord and the faith we have in Christ has forgiven us and the Lord is looking at us as if we had never seen justified we have a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ that's the only way to have peace with God you come to Christ you come through Christ unto the Father by the time you come through Christ unto the Father peace will settle in your heart the peace of God will rule your heart in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. That is prayer. I said that is prayer. Let me give you that prayer again. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it tells us those things which ye have learned and received and heard and seen in me do. You see, when we come to workers, uh, training or Tuesday leadership development or Monday Bible study or Thursday revival or Sunday worship what we have heard what we have seen what we have learned what we have received we do we go back home and do when you see people in your community and they hate each other they destroy each other they want to kill each other and there's a tendency to say, I'll do what they're doing. You didn't learn that in Christ. You didn't receive that in Christ. You didn't receive the nature to hate and the nature to destroy. You didn't hear that and you have not seen that in the apostles and the preachers that have preached the gospel unto us. Only what you have learned, what you have received, what you have heard, what you have seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace is with you everywhere you go in Jesus' name. You are a child of peace. You are a creature of peace. And you are a man, you are a woman of peace. And the peace of God will reign in your heart, in your family, in Jesus' name. Number two now. Number two, the proving sanctification and purity of heart. Any sanctification we cannot prove. It's no sanctification. Any sanctification, we cannot show the evidence. That's no sanctification. Sanctification that you can prove. As we look at the life, as we look at everything that you do, proving sanctification and purity of heart. Let's come back to uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, Blessed at the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Look at that again. That word for means because. Look at this. Blessed are the pure in heart. Why? What brings the blessedness? Because they shall see God. Look at that again. Blessed are the pure in heart. Who are the pure in heart? What's the description of a heart that is pure? It's a heart without age, hypocrisy, or hatred. When somebody is going about and it belongs to a particular church, a good church, he has a good Bible, he has good preachers, but he is pregnant with hatred. His tummy, his heart, is bulging out with hatred. He carries about the pregnancy of hatred. That heart is not pure. 
e is for envy a pure heart does not have envy does not have jealousy somebody has that position praise the lord i thank god for him somebody has that privilege praise the lord i thank god for her but when the heart is filled with envy and every utterance every disposition every way the person behaves is a mark is the smoke coming out of the heart that has envy that one is not sanctification and when we say pure in heart it there means there is no anger there are people who are angry at faceless people they don't even know the people they are angry at they say i'm angry we we'll say what are you angry at i'm angry at the government i'm angry at the country i'm angry at the people i'm angry at the system i'm angry about everything sanctified but the heart is full of anger and the fellow carries about anger all the actions he behaves in an erratic manner why he's angry he just angry he says that god should punish everybody punish everybody all those people who are there he doesn't know the people he's talking about they are faceless people but he just feels that things are not right whoever it is there that is not doing this and doing that god punish all of them is angry a heart that is full of hatred and hypocrisy envy and jealousy and anger and animosity everywhere there does no sanctification and we just mention sanctification with word of mouth without understanding how there is retaliation or revenge there are people it's like the the, the hide uh, is stone in their hands they have not seen the person they are going to throw the stone at but they are prepared every time there's a stone to throw there is something to cut there is something to push there is somebody they must show that they are going to revenge who did that against me who said that against me who did all these other things they don't even know the right person that did that thing against them but the first person that shows up that they see uh, they give it to him what oh, sanctification what oh, purity of heart if the heart is full of revenge or retaliation the chief there is tempestuous temper a heart that is pure is not full of tempestuous temper you know when that thing comes upon some people their temper is so violent and their temper is so uncontrollable there's no purity there when the heart is pure purified and purged all those sins will not be there and those are the people that jesus spoke about and he said blessed are the pure in heart their hearts purified their hearts put for they shall see god proving sanctification with purity of heart hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 14 in hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 for by one offering he christ has perfected forever them that are sanctified he has perfected forever them that are sanctified look at verse 16 there in verse 16 there is the covenant that i will make with them after those days says the lord i will put my laws into their hearts they are sanctified in verse 14 and then i will put my law is the law of love the nature of love the very nature of god himself i will write my laws in their hearts and in their minds will i write them look at verse 22 in verse 22 let us draw near with a true heart the heart becomes transformed and the heart becomes true and the heart becomes transparent and it says let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience no evil conscience anymore and then it says our bodies washed with pure water 
I pray the Lord will do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1, we're reading from verse 5. It's telling us, it says, Now the end of the commandments, the goal of the commandments, and the destination that we're pointing to of the commandment is charity, love out of a pure heart. Love out of a pure heart. Not lost, not um, fleshly, uh, fleshly lost, and not something that wants to fulfill the bad and the evil intentions of the flesh, but love, charity, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfailed. Let's look at number three. Number three here is uh, telling us about the persevering spirit with purpose of heart. Purpose of heart. You see, in the world in which we live, if you are not having purpose of heart, this is where I am going. And this is the narrow path I am going to take to get there. This is what it takes to see God. See God in my prayer. See God on the stormy sea. See God on the crossroad. And see God when the attack is coming so that in spiritual warfare, I will see God show up and I will scatter all the agents of the devil and see God on the day of rapture and see God in eternity and all it all through eternity. If you don't have that purpose of heart, whatever happens will shake you whatever happens will jolt you when people either they persecute you that persecution can make you turn back and say ah you know how to do that bad thing to somebody okay I will show you and pay you back so you will know how painful it is you join them you become part of them you told a lie against me, you slander me. When those things happen, you will turn back. If you don't have purpose of heart and you don't know where you're going, you will slander them too. But a person who is saved, having the peace of heart, a person who is sanctified, having purity of heart, and he knows he must keep that purity to get to the heavenly kingdom, he must have purpose of heart that his spirit will persevere in the good way and it will not turn in the way of unrighteousness persevering spirit with purpose of heart we're coming to psalm 17 we're reading from verse 3 psalm 17 reading from verse 3 it tells us thou hast proved mine heart you know, that's what God is always looking at. He doesn't only really look at our actions. Sometimes the action is good, but the intention, the foundation of that action is doubtful. It's not loving. It's not pure. Sometimes the action is profitable. But the heart from where that action is coming from is not purified god is looking at the heart it says i do not look the lord does not look as man looketh on the outward expression but he looks on the heart and the psalmist said thou hast proved mine heart thou hast visited me in the night thou hast tried me and shall find nothing i am purposed i am determined I am focused, I have decided, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. That takes real purpose. When somebody speaks to you in an angry manner, with a bad tone, with a demeaning attitude, and he cuts you down sharp for you not to reply and transgress with your mouth takes purpose of heart 
I know where I'm going. I want to see God every step of the way. And I want to see God at the edge of the journey. I don't want to labor in vain while I'm here. Therefore, I purpose that my heart will not transgress. Let's look at Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel chapter 1, reading from verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart. Personal. Daniel purposed in his son far away in a foreign country away from judah daniel proposed in his son not knowing that god was going to use him in chapter 2 of daniel to reveal the forgotten dream of the king daniel proposed in his heart not knowing that god will use him to bring a divine interpretation in chapter four he didn't know the future but daniel proposed in his heart not knowing that one day will come they will throw him in the lion's den and the lions will not have any power to eat him up daniel proposed in his heart not knowing that he was going to have the revelation of ages to come until the time of the coming of Christ and yet Daniel proposed in his heart you see what you do today the decisions you make today the consecration you make today and the purpose of what you have today is to prepare you for the future you don't know what God is going to use you for in the chapter 2 of your life in the chapter 4 of your life in the chapter 6 of your life in the great things the Lord has planned and purpose for you in ministry and life but in preparation for the glorious future, he wants to give you. Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. I pray the peace of heart the Lord will give to everyone. Purpose of heart, the Lord will give to everyone. And purity of heart, the Lord will establish in every one of us in Jesus' name. Point number two now is the promise and the power for pure hearts. The promise and the power for pure hearts. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the promise for pure hearts. Number two, the prayer for a pure heart is something we have to pray for. Number three, the power for a pure heart. Let's look at number one, the promise for pure hearts. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, they shall see God is not qualified it's not limited blessed are the pure in heart those are the people that see god when they pray those are the people that see god when they knock at the door of mercy those are the people that see god when there is any challenge and any power of darkness wanting to uh, pounce on them and destroy them and they look for god to come and solve the problem immediately god shows up those are the people that see god when they difficulty there are difficulties in life there are difficulties in the ministry and then uh, there are difficulties that only god can solve and these are the people that see God when they're looking for God and they say we don't know what to do and this problem will overwhelm us blessed are the pure in heart the promise is they shall see God and of course on the day when the Lord shall come and when we shall see him face to face and we will see the king in his beauty blessed at the pure in heart for those are the people 
that will see God. I pray that this promise of seeing God, the Lord will fulfill for every one of us in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What word is that? Only the pure in heart shall see the Lord. Those are the only people. Heaven and earth may pass away. Generation may come after generation. That word of promise still remains today. Only the pure in heart will see the Lord. We're looking at Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4. Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4 Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4 it says He that has One person He that has You know purity of heart Sanctification Going up in the rapture Is not a promise for a community it's not a composite thing it's a personal thing that's why jesus said two shall be on the bed and one shall be taken and the other left and two shall be grinding at the meal one shall be taken and the other shall be left that's why the angels told the lord they say, he said go to the mountain do not look back behind you that's why we're told and lord's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt and jesus said remember lord's wife personal dedication personal expectation personal experience he that has clean hands and a pure heart he that has clean hands and a pure heart or has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully psalm 89 verse 34 psalm 89 verse 34 is telling us that my covenant will i not break I have said the people that will ascend to the heel of the Lord, they're the people that have clean hands and a pure heart, and that covenant I will not break it for anyone, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. You cannot say, Lord, I come. We did many wonderful works in your name. We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. And in your name, we did all these miracles. Well, that's good. That was helpful to the people who received the healing and the miracles and the deliverances. But where is your evidence that you have pure heart to be able to get to heaven lord i didn't have time to look for pure heart all I, I had time to look for is the time is the ability to manifest power manifest authority and look at the records god i cast out devils and i did many wonderful things who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? They, the, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. And that covenant I will not break, nor alter the sin that has gone out of my lips. I pray this holiness and purity of heart we will not drop it in the path of duty and great zealous work in Jesus' name. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And what is said before is still maintains today because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's look at number two now. Number two is the prayer for a pure heart. Uh, the, the pure heart does not just come and meet us, you know, because we're going on the road and all of a sudden we're not even praying, we're not even desiring, we're not even thirsty, we're not even hungry for a pure heart. All of a sudden, pure heart just came 
It doesn't come like that. The promises are there. We must go to God, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. We must ask psalm 51 in psalm 51 we're reading from verse 7 in psalm 51 verse 7 purge me that's prayer we must come to god we have discovered we've searched our heart we've looked into our heart and we're telling the lord purge me with Esop, and i shall be clean wash me i shall be whiter than snow i don't just want to be as white as snow i want to be whiter than snow take every stain away from my heart take every spot away from my love take the wrinkle the mark of the adamic nature of the old man take that away from me wash me yourself and i shall be whiter than snow look at verse 10 in verse 10 it tells us creating me a clean heart oh god it's prayer and it is prayer that is coming out of a sincere heart out of a true heart and out of a passionate desire desirous heart creating me a clean heart to god and renew a right spirit within me ezekiel chapter 36 in ezekiel chapter 36 i'm reading from verse 26 ezekiel 36 26 it says a new heart also a new heart also is done something before this time is cleansed us he sprinkled clean water upon us he has saved us he has reconciled us with himself and says beyond that above that this is what i will also do a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you an heart of flesh. Verse 37. In verse 37, it tells us that thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will yet for this be inquired of. He said he will do it. He will cleanse us. He will purge us. He will give us a pure heart, a clean heart. He said he will do it. Before he does it, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. When we come and we ask, we must ask in faith. In James chapter 1 verse 6. James chapter 1 verse 6 but let him ask in faith nothing wavering we know that with God all things are possible and with that understanding we go to God he can make you pure he can make me pure he can purify your heart he can purify my heart and therefore we go to him we ask let him ask in faith nothing we bring all things are possible to him that believeth and because of that we go to god we have the possibility of having a pure heart let him ask in faith nothing we bring and god will do it number three in number three we have the power for a pure heart the power for a pure heart do you remember that Jesus prayed for his own disciples and he said sanctify them by the truth he says the truth he was speaking to them has the power to sanctify them that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in you that they my disciples after they had been saved and their names have been written in the book of life in heaven that they may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me but he didn't stop there it is the ones who have 
purity of heart that's all that's enough he said but tarry in the city of jerusalem wait until you receive the promise of the father for john truly baptized with water but he shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence for ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and judea and in samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth and the people the church came together they were with one accord and they prayed and the place where they prayed was shaking and then it says and those apostles went out and they witnessed of the power of god peace for salvation purity for sanctification power for the holy ghost baptism we don't exchange one for the other we don't give up one because we have this your goal is not only to make it at the rapture your goal is also to have the power to talk to other people witness to other people preach to other people proclaim the gospel to other people and persuasively powerfully bring them unto the lord we need power for a pure heart in uh, second chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 second chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong mighty and powerful in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards sin he wants to show himself mighty he wants to show himself powerful. He wants to show himself strong towards those people whose heart is perfect towards him. It tells us in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. It says, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. That's talking about the pure heart, full of love, love to God, and love to your neighbor. Now, what if you have love and because you have love you go to visit somebody who is sick all you have is love but no power all you have is sympathy without supernatural authority you can cry with them you can weep with them you can empathize sympathize with them but you cannot do more Pure heart is good for you. Pure heart is good for you to see God. But now you've come to visit somebody who has problem. What are you going to do without the power that comes upon a pure heart? Or maybe you yourself, you are down, you're sick in the dead of the night you cannot contact anybody and you are rolling in pain but you have a pure heart but you don't know how to link up and how to connect with the power of god in your purity of heart and you're saying if pastor so and so are here now and he's in the dead of the night I don't know whether he would have put off his phone. What am I going to do now? Your pure heart have a powerful, powerful spirit. Holy Ghost power. I pray God will give every one of us.
and I'll give more of it to you in Jesus name look at verse 19 and look at of that same Luke chapter 10 I'm looking at verse 19 behold I give unto you power oh Lord somebody said I don't need that all I need purity of heart all I need holiness all I need I just want to overcome temptation and be triumphant I don't want power because if I have power I may be I may have the tendency for pride pride should not be there that's what purity of heart would have dealt with because when you are sanctified pride will not be there pride will not be there in your heart in Jesus name what if our children say oh God I don't want to make first class all I want is purity of heart what if our wives say Lord I don't want to have children if I have children I will be so happy and I may be proud all I want is purity of heart what if our daddies the heads of the families the breadwinner what if they say I don't want promotion I don't want money I don't want any place to be a director and to be a man of power and authority I may become proud all I want is uh, purity of heart. You will not do that. Am I talking to somebody there? We have peace. God will give you peace. You have purity. God will give you purity. You have power. You must have power. I will have power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Give me a good amen. amen. Satan will not hurt you. Evil spirits will not hurt you. Occultic power will not hurt you. All the things flying about in the air, pandemic and plague, will not come near your doorstep in Jesus' name. If anything is coming, the authority and the power to say stop there, they will stop in Jesus' name. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And when you tread on them, they will not hurt you. You'll destroy every scorpion, every power scorpion, every power of the serpents in Jesus' name. If they made any incantation against you, any occultic utterance against you, everyone will fall to the ground in the presence of those people. They will not get to you in Jesus' name. The Lord will keep you. Power. Somebody shout power. That power will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, we're looking at verse 8. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 8, it says, But he shall receive power. Who are those people? You receive in Jesus' name. He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, you'll be a witness. In all Judea, you'll be a witness. In Samaria, you'll be a witness. And unto the uttermost part of the earth, in Jesus' name point number three now in point number three the performance of prophecy for the pure in heart come back to matthew chapter 5 verse 8 matthew chapter 5 verse 8 the performance of prophecy for the pure in heart blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god that's promise that's also a prophecy three things number one the sure performance for obedient pure hearts the sure performance for obedient pure hearts number two the sure pronouncement for obstinate impure hearts number three the sure prophecy from the only potentate on high. Number one, the sure performance for obedient, pure 
hearts. Let's look at Genesis chapter 26. We're looking at verse 2. Genesis chapter 26, verse 2. It says, The Lord appeared unto him, Isaac, and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Verse 3. In verse 3, it tells us, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. When uh, Isaac was there, he dug a well here. Those people stopped it. And he dug another well, and those people stopped it. They didn't want him to prosper. And so he was thinking of, what do I do now? You know, there are people, uh, they are with us over here, and they look at circumstances over here, over there, over there, and, uh, you know, things appear not to be working well. And they are thinking and planning, I will shift my, my tent, and I will go back to such and such a place. And God told Isaac, don't shift, don't move, stay where I will show you. And when you stay there, the Lord will bless you. So John in this land, and I will be with thee. I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Verse 5, it says in verse 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my covenants, my statutes, and my laws. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, that Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, it tells us in verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year. Tell me what you are going to receive. And hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. Look at a place that was not favorable. A place where all those people there, they were against him. And all the wells he, he dug, they will stop everything. And God said, don't mind your day of blessing is coming. And the Lord is saying to you tonight, don't mind whatever might have happened in the past, your day of prosperity, your day of progress, and your day of coming up higher, and your day of blessedness has come in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, we're reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 we're reading from verse 12 then said the lord unto me uh-huh this is not unto jeremiah alone this one is unto me i said this one is unto me it will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name thou hast seen well for i will hasten my word to perform it performance in your life blessing in your life stay where god has put you and in that place the blessing will come in jesus name number two number two the sure pronouncement for obstinate impure hearts you see the lord wants us to be pure in heart and if somebody is obstinate and impure in heart 
he will miss the blessing of God. That's what happened to Saul, that is, the first king of Israel. That's also what happened unto Solomon. That's what happened to many people. The promise of God was there, but they didn't claim the promise of God. That will not happen to you. Look at Jeremiah chapter 18. We're reading from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 18. We're reading from verse 7. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck it up and to pull it down and to destroy it. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, if that nation, if that family, if that community, if that individual against to Roma are pronounced, they turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I sought to do unto them. That's what happened to Nineveh. A Jonah came and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And those people did not say, Well, God has made up his mind. He were impure in our heart, we are obstinate, and there is uh, no way of escape. Judgment is going to come. Let it fall. They didn't say that. They repented, and all the evil that would have happened to them did not happen again. Whatever evil would have happened to our extended family family our nucleus family our local family and would have happened to any of us because we did something that god did not appreciate and it threatens with judgment as we turn to the lord and we say create in me a clean heart of god purify and purge me and our hearts are purified all those negative dreams all the negative prophecy all the negative uh, pronouncement those things will not happen to any of us anymore in jesus name a good heaven shaking amen, amen. number three now number three is a sure prophecy from the only potentate on high the sure prophecy from the only potentate on high second peter chapter one verse 19 second peter chapter one we're reading from verse 19 we have also a more a more sure word of prophecy all the prophecies we read about blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god a more sure word of prophecy when uh, Isaiah made a proclamation of prophecy, it was fulfilled. Jeremiah made the prophecy, it was fulfilled. And Ezekiel made the prophecy, it was performed. And John the Baptist declared the prophecy, it was performed. And now, as we come to the new covenant, all the prophecies of the word, all the promises of the word, more sure words of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that she take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star shall arise in your hearts no darkness in your heart no destruction in your heart no demonic devastation in your life but the star the day star will arise in your heart in jesus name your path will be the path of light will be the path of the performance of the word of god and the word of god will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name and let's end up now with luke chapter 1 verse 45 luke chapter 1 reading from verse 45 it tells us and blessed is she and blessed is he that believe, for there shall be a performance in your life, a performance in your family, a performance in your ministry, a performance. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God as the Lord purifies your heart everywhere you turn, everywhere you go, in your ministry of soul winning, in your ministry of preaching the word, in your ministry of counseling, in your ministry of prayer, you will see God. You will see God in His power. 
you will see God in his love you will see God in his mercy and you will see God in the performance of all his promises on your behalf on the behalf of all the people you are calling upon God for in Jesus name Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things, all those things which were told her from the Lord. Better days in your life, happier days in your life, greater days in your life, and days every time you will see God in his glory. And at the end, when the saints go marching in, your place will not be vacant. Praise God, brother. Praise God, sister. You'll be there. You'll see God on the final day. You'll see God not for judgment. You'll see God for reward. And the Lord will reward every good thing you're doing. Every good thing you're still going to do until you see him face to face in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer.